All right, so what we have on the floor here It's Patrick at High Impact Motorsports again, and we are working on the 620 to 720 frame project that is ongoing. Ongoing. And uh, this episode of this is going to talk about how we are going to, you know, like get a frame ready, maybe? So by ready, I mean ready to sandblast and paint. So this is the really coming down to the brass tacks on prep work on this frame. So we're going to go ahead and do the last fab work we need to do to the frame and then move ourselves on towards sandblasting the frame, painting the frame, and then putting all the brand new suspension components on the frame. So the key here is we are working on it and uh, there are a couple of things that we have to do and have had to do. So one of the things that is yet to be done is we need to take and cut some clearance out here where this is gonna be lowered low enough that this could be bash up there so we need to be able to raise the frame, basically notch the frame out so that this has enough room. Another task yet to be done is this is where the rear of the fuel tank mounts. We're not using a fuel tank that would have fit in this frame we're using one out of a later model truck that has actually been shortened. So this is the front tank mount, it's in the wrong spot. So we're gonna need to cut this off right about here so that we can still have our park brake attachment point and then move the fuel tank mounting right here. So we're gonna have to fabricate a fuel tank mounting bracket right here so that we can get the fuel tank in. Something else we have done that is fabrication uh, is basically we have taken this cross member and it actually drooped down quite a bit more Since this truck is going a lot lower, but it also has the points where it the park brake and all that are going to hook up onto We decided that we would take and cut the bottom of this off and then we plated it off So now that bracket right there If you come forward is level with the other lower points on the frame so if you if, if you keep an eye on that See those th three cross members? I bring the camera up, you will see that they're all level with each other on the same plane. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on that fabrication work today. Get Hopefully get that wrapped up, get the fuel tank mounted in, which actually the fuel tank has been mounted, has been modified so that it will clear the back of the cab. So we actually had to cut a portion of the tank out and then shorten the fuel tank. So it's a little lower on the capacity than we had originally had with the original tank capacity, but it is better than the 620, so we don't care. Uh, it should be about a 12 and a half to 13 gallon fuel tank, but we will find that out when we fill it. And while we're talking about fabrication, we have made some changes to the way we fabricate. Uh, we got ourselves this welder over here, this Vulcan, Pro, t Pro MIG 215, MIG Max 215, whatever the heck it is from Harbor Freight, which is actually an excellent welder uh, for what we're doing. And we'll talk more about that as we go on, but that's a great welder. But our plasma torch died, and so we needed to get a new plasma torch, and we also had uh, this metal cart hanging around that we had no purpose for. And so we turned this into a fabrication table. And let's talk a little bit about this, just for the sake of the audience. You're gonna see it more in our videos. Um, but we built it mainly to house the, the cutting, uh, the plasma torch. So the plasma cutter sits right here. And uh, it's set up so that we can actually just take the grounding strap. The ground strap wraps here. And then of course it grounds right there. And uh, so that's right there. Uh, so you have good cord management for it. Um, 
and you can work right on this work surface. It's fully grounded. There's a spot right here where you can actually cut over. The slag will drop right down, but leave you a good work surface. It's magnetic, so all of our magnets are there. We've got a fire extinguisher right nearby. Mounts for your grinders. Um, a little tray for air tools and other things like that. And then over here, this drawer, which was already on the cart, you can use for consumables and things of that nature, for welding. And then the other consumables, like your grinding discs, like your flap wheels, your grind discs, your cutting wheels and grinding wheels, all of that go on this cart so that we can do what we need to do. So uh, the, 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 you're the one, kind of the mastermind behind this cart. What do you think about the cart now? Oh, the cart? Perfect. Yeah. It's, uh, you're well organized. You know where your stuff's at. You're not digging up your shelves saying like, hey, who left this here, you know? It's like... Oh, uh, and this fancy welder that we have, it's fancy because uh, it allows for a spool gun. So you can weld small aluminum items. And uh, we just got to invest in the spool gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm up here and we got the gas tank mounted in and we've cut out that bracket that we were talking about. So what we've done is we added the front mount for the fuel tank. So this is now in place, welded in, and then we removed the front mount and left this much of it so that the park brake cable has something to hold on to. So we cut off the, the upper portion of it, which is down there on the floor, and then we ground this back so the top of the frame rail is clean. And now that's good, so we can put the park brake back in when the time comes, and now the tank is mounted in solid. And that's a hard body tank that we had shortened up. They did a little bit of a shorten up on the tank, took about four inches out of it. So now the tank fits completely under the bed. It'll have an in-tank fuel pump, and it actually sits in a fashion to where it, it's actually no lower than this cross member right here too. All right, so one of the things that we have to do on this build is we're lowering the rear end, which means using a lowering spring. Now, what we were going to do before was use a set of Belltech lowering springs, but unfortunately, they throw the axle further back, which is absolutely not what we need because we need to get that wheel centered. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to redrill the perches on the axle and position the axle further forward on the vehicle, on the spring, so that then it's further forward in the vehicle. And there's nothing really wrong with doing that. But the other thing we need to do is we don't wanna use 100% blocks to lower this thing down, we want to lower it with lowering springs. And so we're going to do that using four x four leaf springs from a 1984 to 86 Nissan four x four. All right, so what we have on the floor here are two springs. The spring on the bottom is a stock two-wheel drive spring, and the spring above is a modified 4x4 spring. And if you look, this two-wheel drive spring has a lot more arch than the 4x4 spring. And by having this basically de-arched, what we're allowing is we're going to drop this sucker about two inches just with the spring. Now, the 4x4 spring is not out of the box ready to go in that we've actually modified this so let's go over here to an unmodified 4x4 spring if you look at it we have two overload springs down here and they this thing is spans the whole spring and then our regular spring right here what we're going to do is we unbolt these we unbolt the bolt and we're going to need to take this pin and flop it anyway. So we're going to unbolt it. We're going to remove these overloads. And then we're going to take and use a medium length overload off of a two-wheel drive. We're just going to throw that on there. And that should take care of that job. And so there you have it. That is how you use 4x4 springs in a two-wheel drive truck to achieve a drop. So if you consider the two inches of drop with the spring, that means we're gonna do a two inch block in addition, which should get us the total of four inches that we want to get this thing down 
four inches on this truck will be good. It will look good, it will ride well, it should be, should be a good combination. All right, so we got that C-notch taken care of, and it's not much of a C-notch, just a little extra clearance. And it looks like frame-wise, we're going to start getting it ready. It looks like we're ready to start blasting on it. So that's the next step in this process. That sandblaster is finally getting used. All right. Says so stay later at work. Trying to fill up the bodywork on that car. Uh, probably shouldn't be doing it outside the way I am, but uh, I'm hoping to move that back in and shut the door real soon. But uh, yeah. I figured today we even sandblast that night. My shifting machine. All right, so anyway, oh yeah, this is dusty. Yeah, you know why it's dusty? Because we decided that we would do something incredibly stupid, if you would, and uh, we decided we were gonna sandblast the frame ourselves. And so, uh, as you can see, there's, wait, <laughs> it's just too tedious and we're, uh, we tried, right? Anyway, um, this frame right here is going off to sandblast and uh, when it comes back, we will paint it and then assemble it. Now, originally the plan all along was to have someone else blast this frame. But uh, we decided that we wanted to show kind of the process for the DIYer or whatnot. And for the price that we can get this thing blasted, um, it's insanity for us to continue. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just send it off to Sandblast. It should be noted that when you sandblast, you get crap everywhere. You get crap everywhere. So unless you plan on doing an incredible amount of cleaning or have an area where you can blast and not worry about it, it's probably advisable not to sandblast your own stuff. But hey, it was worth a shot, right? We've never done this before. Anyway, so when you next see us with this project, we'll have a completely blasted frame and we'll start prepping the frame for paint. We'll paint it, we'll install some new parts on it, and we've got a body coming to put on this frame. That ought to be pretty fun. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.